this is uh, agenda item 6A. It is REZ 2022-4. This is the Radney property located at 5761 Long Pond Road. It currently is R10 with conditions and the request is to remove those conditions. It would remain as R10. It has county water and sewer and this involves a one acre piece of property. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Good morning Commissioners. As you heard, the request is to remove the existing conditions from the 2019 case when this first came from R1 to R10. Um, subject property is within the urban service area and the suburban character area for comprehensive plan. Again, R10 isn't allowed uh, there. You see the property is dry, sitting at the corner of Dykes Pond and Long Pond Road. This was the proposed split from 2019 with the one acre parcel uh, split into two. One of those conditions, I'll read it here, or I'll read them now. No modular or mo mobile homes are allowed. Condition two is no duplexes are allowed. And number three, that the lot shall not be divided past the two lots requested by the applicant. That's what you see here. You'll also note the property sizes for the properties along Long Pond and Dykes Pond. Those on Long Pond are approximately a third acre, 15,000 square feet. Those on Dykes Pond are a little over 8,000 square feet. And the request here with the R10 is to split the one lot there, lot number one, the northern lot, in half to approximately 10,000 square feet R10 conforming lots. Lot two will remain the same at a little, almost a half acre lot. <clears throat> Planning Commission recommends Approval with the following conditions. Number one, modular mobile homes are not allowed. Number two, duplexes are not allowed. And number three, the northern lot, lot one, may, be only, may only be split once into an R10 conforming lot for the purpose of building a 2,000 square foot heated single family home. Again, the Planning Commission recommends approval with those conditions. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? So Mr. Taylor, if I understand it correctly then, um, the original request was to remove the conditions. However, the applicant has agreed to those conditions would remain with the exception of that one lot to the north that would be subdivided into two lots. That's correct, sir. I had one other question. Um, is, is that assuming uh, 2,000 square feet or more versus just 2,000 square feet? There are some back and forth between the planning commissioners about the size of the house and Mr. Commissioner Bailey recommended 2,000 heated or conditioned square feet what was his motion. Uh, Commissioner Wilds again made the motion. Commissioner Bailey clarified and that was the final approval of the 2,000 heated square feet. I would, I would caution the commission about limiting and requiring a minimum amount of square footage uh, because then that means you have to police that uh, to make sure. I think that the, the market will drive the size of the house on those lots and let that decision fall from there rather than dictating a minimum size or even a maximum size square footage. That was, pretty, that was pretty much my question. The owner, I, I noticed it says 2,000 square feet. Yeah. Specific item. Can we even make that a condition? I mean, legal? I mean, this well, is the land in this case. I guess we can condition it. Thing is, word legal is sitting right here, so we can yeah. <laughs> you, you could, but the chairman makes a good point. Um, and for clarity, I would say lot one may be split only once in two and R10. Do they mean two? Lot one can be split to create two R10. So, how should we clear it up? What should we say to clear it up? That's good. Well, that depends on your intent. If your intent is to permit lot one to be split into two lots, you clarify that lot one may be split into two lots each, having a minimum of x square feet. Okay. One more question. J.D., was this the, uh, this was the same owner from the 2019 case, or has it changed hands? It has changed hands. In 2019, it was Mr. Mark Corson, and now this is Mr. Cody Radney, represented by Mr. Jake Howell as his, as his uh, agent. Okay. Any other questions? They don't have an HOA out there, do they? I 
believe the Long Pond Property Owners Association would cover this property. I know they're more active on the actual Long Pond side. I'm not sure if the extent of the extends across the road. But the Long Pond Property Owners Association president did come and speak at the public uh, hearing in front of the planning commission. To my knowledge, it, these, this one parcel here is not part of the nature of well, it seemed like at the planning commission meeting, most of the concerns were related to duplex. Is that, is that fair to say? To the objections about duplexes or mobile homes. Correct. So what it were. Okay. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to agenda.